What's up, cooks? It's Wednesday! How are you guys doing? Today on the show, we're going to do a real quick Kenwood Mixer debrief. We're just coming off of our big Kenwood Cooking Chef review and I got a few questions in the comments. I just thought I would address them all at once. Um, and a couple other things that I wanted to talk about about that mixer. I also have a little toy that we're going to talk about. I've had it for several years. I want to get it out to get it on my mind because I want to start using it. So what's up? Hey, it's Wednesday. So I just want to give a big what's up to my Facebook group. We are having a great conversation in there and I love seeing all your guys' cooking, your food, the pasta is fabulous, everything is fabulous. If you want to join the group, there's a link down in the description. It's facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. And we talk all week about gadgets and pans and cooking and all kinds of fun stuff. So quick, what's up to my Facebook group? How are you guys doing? I really appreciate you guys in the group and participating. And um, I hope you're having a lot of fun with it. So we're going to do a quick Kenwood mixer debrief because after that chest review that we just did, a few things came up in the comments and I just wanted to address them because I think it's a fabulous mixer. And I think everybody else who watched it agrees that that mixer is over the top. I think some of the things that have come up and one of the things I can tell you when you're doing a review like that, my review is like an straight out of the box, first time we're using it review, exactly if you purchased one and you were to use it straight out of the box. So I can't really comment on the longevity of the mixer. Obviously that was the first time I used it. And there's so much to that mixer. And of course there's things that I miss because if I talk about every little thing, it's going to be, a uh, an hour long, two hour long video on that mixer because it just goes on and on and on. So one big issue that came out was the handles on the bowl. Some other testing has been done with bowls of that type that have the two handles instead of one big handle that goes all the way down the bowl. And yes, I would say that is an issue. Um, for me, in that test, I don't think I really focused on that because I wasn't really pouring anything out of the bowl. Um, to me, it is not a deal killer in any way, shape or form. Um, I do believe that the KitchenAid does have a better handle on the bowl so you can take the bowl, get your ingredients out a lot easier than you can in the Kenwood. It's definitely an issue. It is not a deal killer to me, but it could be for somebody. So just, you know, realize that that bowl has a different shape than the KitchenAid. The KitchenAid has a wider, rounder bowl and the Kenwood has a sort of a V kind of bowl with two handles. And yeah, it is a little bit awkward getting stuff out of there, but it wasn't horrible. And, um, so I would just say, be aware of that, but to me, it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> I'm drinking lemonade today. And it's puckery lemonade. Amy's on the wagon. <laughs> on the lemon wagon. That means, that means you don't have alky in there. Oh, okay. Um, so another thing has come up. Several people have asked me, do I think the Kenwood is better than the Ankh or the Bosch? <laughs> and that's like, that's like the million dollar question, right? I would say 
No. But I wouldn't say, I would say that they're different. It still comes back to what I've said in the past, that it really depends on what you prefer and your cooking style. And nothing about that has changed after using the Kenwood. If you like a planetary type mixer, I would say the Kenwood is at the top of that list. It is up there in terms of quality to me, but it's a different animal than the Ankh and the Bosch. I like the Ankh and the Bosch for reasons other than I like the Kenwood or the Commercial 8 on the KitchenAid or a lot of other planetary style mixers. It's a different experience. Um, they handle recipes differently. And I don't know, some people, I can't give you an answer on whether to buy one or the other. It's a personal preference. If you're gonna do smaller batches and you prefer a planetary mixer, I can only tell you in terms of the scale of planetary mixers, what's the best, what's medium and popularly priced, and what is a bargain mixer that performs fairly decently. Then you have the other kind of mixers like the Bosch and the Ang that are driven from the base. And I really, really can't see how I can compare the two. So my advice is still the same. Look at how you cook, what do you do prefer and go from there. My answer also has the, you know, you buy a mixer, it doesn't have to be your mixer for life. And if you want a planetary mixer, get one and later get a bigger mixer like a Bosch or an Ank. Um, that's my answer. And buy from a store with a liberal return policy, just in case. Yeah, just in case you don't like either one of them. But that's my answer to that. Um, so what do you guys think of that, uh, the Kenwood? That thing is pretty, pretty skippy, right? <laughs> I really like it. So I have a little tool that I bought several years ago. Um, when I started thinking about getting into bread and started actually making bread, I wanted a proofer like they have in a professional kitchen. And I tried all kinds of different things in all the bread forms. Everybody was trying different things in terms of proofing. They were turning on their oven at like a hundred degrees and spraying water in there to make some steam. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And a company at that time came out with a countertop proofer. And um, I bought one and the thing is fantastic. So let me go grab it. So this is a Broad and Taylor folding proofer. And what's neat about it is it actually will fold. I don't usually fold it because one time I folded it wrong and all these pieces came apart and it was hard for me to get it back together. So I just leave it like this, but you can fold it all up. This will go down. This is housed in the middle and it's pretty flat like this. Um, the way this works is, take the lid off here real quick. So the way this works is there's a rack here and this is like a heating element down here. And you put some water in this little pan, you put your rack in, 
like that. Then you put your bread in here. You can put your bread in, in a bowl. You can put it in your loaf pans or whatever kind of pan you're using. You just put your bread in there. You put your lid on. You're gonna turn it on. And you're just going to regulate your temperature up and down. Um, it goes up to 120 degrees. You're really not gonna wanna proof that high. Um, I don't know, I think you proofed down about 101 to 98, something like that. Um, I'm not an expert in this thing, so I need to become an expert in it. Let it warm up in there, and this is gonna start giving off steam when it warms up. It's going to be a nice, light human environment. It's not gonna be rushing steam up, but it's a great place to put your dough and let it rise. Um, this is a great little tool. You can also actually make yogurt in this. A lot of people make yogurt in this machine. So, looking forward to trying this baby out. I can interject. What? Like, you usually don't have troubles with yours rising. I assume during the summertime it's humid enough in here. But during the wintertime when it's dry, Maybe, yeah, maybe during the winter time. I mean, all times you could use some humidity. Really depends on your climate too. But it's it's pretty humid here at times. Um, but I think this is a great little tool. So what we have coming up is I just got a wheat grinder from Nutrimill in the house. We're going to be doing some grain milling. I got a big, huge bucket of grain, um, wheat, and um, we're going to be milling that up. And then we're going to possibly using the Bosch to make, you know, three or four loaves. And then we're going to proof some of it in this folding proofer. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get going on that. So this is the folding proofer. I'll put a link to it down in the description. I'll also put a link to the um, Nutramill and to the Kenwood Cooking Chef that we just did a review on. So what's up? Mm. it's Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. I'm looking forward to the weekend so we can cook, right? And have fun with our little gadgets. Um, if you would like to join my Facebook group, again, on Facebook groups, I'm at Amy Learns to Cook. I'm also on the web at amylearnstocook.com. And I am on Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. And I'm on Instagram at Cooking with Amy.